What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech, and as an installer for many, many years, the hardest part of my job, and the most time consuming part of my job, was wall fishing. If you have the proper tools, wall fishing could be a breeze, and you're only as good as your tools. So if you wanna be a great installer, get some great tools. Time is money, so if you could save time running the wires in the wall, then you can move on to your next job and make more money. In this video, we're gonna be all about how to make your life easier as an installer. So right here, my brother and I designed this portable wall, and this is going to be the most common scenario that you would find inside of a wall. Usually you would find installation on an exterior wall. This keeps your house cool during the summer and warm during the winter. Over here we have an empty space. Usually in this case is the best scenario where you can just drop the wires and they fall straight down to the bottom and you can pull out your wires. Uh, over here, as you can see, we have the fire block. This is every installer's worst nightmare. Um, dropping the wires from the attic down, it would drop right here and stop. And then you would open up the hole down here and look for the wires and there would be nowhere to be found because they're all up here on the fire, resting on the fire block. I'm gonna show you how to get around that as well. In the United States, the most common wall design is studs every 16 inches sometimes they can be spread out as far as 24 inches but let's go by the most common scenario studs every 16 inches using a measuring tape i measure 16 inches from the center of the stud which is 40 centimeters and then using a, a neo magnet provided by the magnet pole kit you wave it around within 16 inches and you should find that drywall nail that's driven into that stud then you mark it on um, my exterior walls in my house the studs are 24 inch spaced apart, not 16 inch. So once you find one, measure 24 inches, and then you can wave that magnet around. It should draw, uh, find that drywall screw in that stud. All right, I am going to demonstrate the magnet spot. The magnet spot is great to locate the wall cavity or the wall space that you want to run your cables down. This right here is the receiver. It uses a nine volt battery and right here is the transmitter. It has a tack right here so you can stick it to the ceiling or on the wall. It also has tacky tape that is included in the case. If you wanna go ahead and stick it to the ceiling or use the tacky tape, that works as well. So if you're in the attic, you just walk in the attic and then even if you're maybe two feet above, it'll let you know where the transmitter is. See, you can see the arrows right here lighting up and that lets you know exactly which wall space you need to drop the cables down and where you should drill um, down on the 2x4. If you guys are interested in this device, I'll leave a link in the video description below. Once you find your spot where you want to drill, just mark it X. Make sure you move all the insulation out of the way, of course. So right here I'm using a three quarter inch spade bit. And we're gonna drill down. From that point, you can take your coax cable and you can drop it down the hole like that. This is an empty wall cavity. It should drop straight down without using any other tools. All right, so now we have insulation in the wall. It's not gonna be that easy. So you take your cable and when you run it down, it starts to curl. All right, so now it's over here. And this is loose insulation. If you have packed insulation, this will probably curl up here and get stuck. Since, since this is loose insulation, it managed its way down, but still curved we need it right about here where the wall plate is. You could use a fish rod, sure, or fish tape, but as you know, if you're in the attic with a fish rod, those are hard and clunky to maneuver in the attic. And the fish tape, as you know, bends. So even if you fish the wire down the wall, it can turn also. What I suggest using is Magnapole. Magnapole is probably the easiest tool to use and the most effective tool when it comes to wire fishing. Now you can either attach to wires 
right here through this hole or you could tape it. In this case, since I already have the connector on, we're going to tape it using uh, black electrical tape right here on the back of the connector and tape it all the way around where it kind of doesn't want to get caught on anything so I'm going to tape it diagonal like that and then leave a tab so it's easy to take off and then fold it just like that so it's going to be easy to remove that later on and see right here how I uh, taped it down so it'll, anything you get caught it'll just slide right up there's no um, 90 degree angles to get caught up on in the wall and when you drop this tool down you want to not push it straight down the middle of the installation you want to go in front of the installation or behind the installation depending on where the wall plate is so I'm going to show you right here so see how I'm trying to push it diagonal to the front then you can grab it right here and then you can roll it down and this is safe this is it doesn't scratch your walls at all so you don't have to worry about that and you just roll it right here all right and the wall plate is right here and you can just maneuver it right where the wall plate is right there and then boom you're right at your location where you need to be this thing goes through insulation very easily now there's some insulation that is very thick and packed and that's why you need to when you insert it you want to go in front of that packed insulation all right but what happens if you have a fire block what then no that is not now i just lost my tool <laughs> right here which is really bad so if you drop your tool down the wall you're really going to need another spade bit and you're going to drill right next to the other hole make sure it's tight this time you can drop the magnet pull tool down all right swing it around grab it and then pull and retract your tool. There we go, you just saved yourself 10 bucks. All right, so let's say you drilled the hole, you're running your wires, and you're fishing your wires down, and you hear a thunk. All right, so now you know that there's a fire block in the wall. And that's good that, you know, uh, houses have fire blocks because it prevents fires from spreading upward into your second floor or even your attic. But for an installer, this is a nightmare. All right, so we're gonna spin the wall around and we're going to go around this fire block. Now there's a few ways to locate a fire block. You can knock. And if you don't hear that echo, you hear a, a shorter sound tone, then you know there's a fire block in this location right here. Uh, you can also use this magnet pole tool and you can wave it back and forth and it should stick to the drywall nail or drywall screw inserted into the fire block. Another way of course is using a stud finder. It should locate the fire block in the wall as well. Right, now that you know where the fire block is, we're going to have to try to go around it to continue fishing the wire down the wall. So this is where the cubit comes into play. So I'm going to go ahead and mount the cubit saw to the oscillating tool, the Ewalt tool, right here. And you just squeeze the trigger and it's going to cut right through the drywall like butter. Don't worry, this saw is safe too for your skin. Ah! I'm just kidding. No, it's fine. And you want to put slight pressure on it and at the same time squeeze the trigger slowly. Head and pop this out just like that. What's cool about this is that we're going to use this to patch the hole in the wall. And right here, there we go. So it looks like I did not 
<laughs> There's a little gap right here. This I could should this should work still. So let's go ahead and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill right here. So of course you want to use a uh, far block sealant after you're done with all this. Take my quarter inch spade bit and drill upward. All right, so I drilled through that. So I got a little my uh, magnet wand right here, and it bends. So you take your magnet wand, you drop your magnet pole into the location, right in that hole, the far block hole. there and then from this point on you can just drop it down the wall using the magnet pole. Now if you want a wall patch that's very easy. I'm going to use some spackle right here. I'm going to put it on the back right here. Place it right in here, just like that. Then I'm gonna get some more and just spackle over it. And of course, you want to sand it down and paint it, all that good stuff. Now, if you don't have this special tool, they do make a Qubit adapter that you can just go ahead and mount it onto this device right here. And so you just squeeze and slide that down, remove that, and then you can attach it to this adapter and it goes onto your regular drill and just unscrew it right here and it slides on like that. This handle is reversible, so it's for righty and lefties and it comes with the Allen key so you can change the handle. It also comes with the bit adapter. Put this on right here. Tighten that. And it's just a quarter inch bit. So let's go ahead. And now when you attach it, you wanna make sure the level is facing up. So we're gonna go ahead and attach it right here. There you go. So you wanna use it like that. In my house, my wall plates are about 11 inches from the floor. All right, so here's the floor level, and I'm gonna measure 11 inches. That's gonna be the bottom of my wall plate, and 16 inches is pretty much the top, okay? And then I'm gonna get a level, and my level says right about there. So I'm gonna mark, go ahead and mark it like that. There we go, so I know that is level, and line it up where that leveled line is. Now there's also a steel bowl in there, and you can use a steel bowl as a level, and you wanna put slight pressure and squeeze the trigger real slowly. Now you can take your magnet pole and then bring it all the way up and take out your wire. So guys, if you found this video really informative, give me a big thumbs up. Worked hard on this project, making the portable wall and demonstrating all these tools. If you know any install or anyone that's in the field of running cables, go ahead and click on the share button below and share this video to them. Help someone out. If you guys are interested in any of these tools, of course, the links will be in the video description below. If you guys want more how-to videos like this coming your way, click on the subscribe button right here. And if you want to check out some of my other tutorials, click on the playlist right here. Thanks, guys, for watching. Later.